Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. It's uh, Monday, the 18th of April, 2022. And uh, we are looking at the next storm system that is coming uh, into the western Great Lakes. That's the primary low, and it's falling apart. And the secondary low is moving uh, into the southeast, and it'll be making a left-hand turn up the eastern seaboard as an intensifying low. And this is going to bring... Uh, some heavy wet snow to parts of the uh, interior northeast, particularly from northern Pennsylvania on up uh, through uh, upstate New York, west of the Hudson and in elevated areas. I want to emphasize that elevation here is going to be a big uh, driver uh, in terms of uh, snow amounts. Uh, it's going to be more in the mountains, less in the valley areas, and uh, it's all rain and wind for the coast. Uh, including gales, uh, gale warnings up for the coastal waters. And also we even have a high wind warning uh, that is up for uh, the uh, areas, some small areas in southeastern New England. And uh, you can take a look here on the watches and warnings map. Winter storm warnings for the Adirondacks down to the Catskills into the Poconos. Uh, you don't see that too often uh, in the uh, second half of the month of late April. We've got winter weather advisories surrounding that. And I'm I'm suspecting that we might see a few additional counties and advisories being extended a little bit further to the west, and we may actually see a couple of additional uh, counties that are now under advisories go into winter storm warning mode once this gets underway on the western flank of this. At least for now, there's nothing up for Vermont, New Hampshire, or Maine, although I imagine that there probably will be uh, some advisories for those areas. And if you take a look on the Weather Service digital snowfall forecast map, there are pockets of uh, a foot plus uh, that you see in the uh, purplish uh, area, the brighter pur purple or pink or whatever color you want to call that. Uh, there's a 14 print up here in the Adirondacks. There's an 8 print near Binghamton, uh, 3 to 4, 3 to 5 inches across much of northern Pennsylvania, even into northeastern Pennsylvania and down into the Catskills, uh, any, anywhere from... Uh, three to maybe as much as six inches. Again, the higher up you go in elevation wise, uh, the better chance you have. Uh, there's even a chance that we could see a little bit of wet snow come into the mix in northwest New Jersey uh, and maybe in western parts of Orange County uh, and uh, points northeastward from there. Lesser amounts, as you notice, uh, in western Connecticut. I'm sorry, northwestern Connecticut, I should say. Western um, what Massachusetts up into Vermont. Uh, again, also... Uh, mountains versus valleys and uh, you see that there's sort of this narrow strip in between the two areas there are shadows here that develop because of the wind direction and the track of the low the low is going to basically track right up in that zone where you see little or no snow and uh, this is um, you know this is what happens when you have a uh, low that's coast hugging and moving northward and also the time of year plays into comes into play in all of this as well meanwhile uh, for areas uh, down in the coast from uh, northeast virginia to chesapeake to uh, the delmarva peninsula on up into southern and southeastern new england we are looking at uh, rain and it's it's going to be fast this is going to come in later today into tonight and then by tomorrow morning much of it is going to be done uh, and through the thick of it tonight, uh, there will be some wind gusts of 40 miles an hour or more, uh, particularly along coastal sections. And as we mentioned, there's a high wind warning for parts of southeastern New England where gusts there could exceed 50 miles an hour. In the meantime, uh, as we take a look at the radar, starting to load up here to the south, uh, we've got rain developing across Virginia, North Carolina, uh, back over into Tennessee uh, and into parts of Ohio and uh, into southern Indy, uh, in Ohio and into, into uh, southeastern Indy. Indiana and also into West Virginia, some bands of heavy rain there. And you can see that the southern end runs down uh, through Georgia and into northern Florida with some uh, some showers. And we've got a new system coming into the Pacific Northwest. We've got uh, some uh, snow in parts of northeastern Minnesota. And uh, that is that dying primary uh, that uh, is going to eventually be taking, giving all its energy to the secondary that's developing in the southeastern part of of the U.S. Just uh, as far as severe weather is concerned today, there's a narrow strip of marginal risk in coastal South and North Carolina, also in coastal cent uh, along the East Coast in Central and Southern Florida. This is for uh, today uh, into Tuesday morning. For Tuesday into Wednesday, marginal risk shifts over into West Texas and Eastern New Mexico, and uh, for <clears throat> Wednesday into Thursday. 
we have a marginal risk in Oklahoma and in two parts of southeast Kansas and western Missouri. So let's let's just look at what's going on in the upper air uh, with with the system in the east. You've got a fairly sharp trough that's uh, dropping uh, from Minnesota down into western Kentucky uh, and western Tennessee. The upper low with that is diving southeastward. It's going to be strengthening over uh, western New York and northwestern Pennsylvania. The track of the upper low is a little more north and west than what it was yesterday. Now, that could be just a one-run shift. We'll see what the day runs do today because it's really going to be important to follow the track of this upper low. Uh, normally, in, in uh, snowstorms, the heaviest snow falls along and on and north and west of where the upper low center is. Uh, so uh, the, the slight shift to the northwest is something you want to look at. Uh, as far as determining uh, you know, what, what ultimately we'll see with respect to amounts. Uh, the other thing I just want to bring up is in terms of the 5,000-foot um, level. This, is, this time of year is especially important. And uh, you'll notice uh, where the zero is, where the uh, blue starts is where the zero is. You can also see the surface low track here uh, as uh, you follow that low. Uh, the, the primary is just about gone. So there's your low. My, NAM loves to jump low centers around. Uh, in in uh, oftentimes it's just the way it, the model is. And there's your low center uh, this afternoon in southeastern North Carolina, and then it just kind of tracks straight up northward up the coast, uh, deepens to a 998 surface low, uh, where the blue starts to the north and west of the low center. That's probably where you're going to start to have to deal with some wet snow. And again. And this is these are temperatures at 5,000 feet. So obviously uh, you start to get down to two, 3,000, 2,000 feet. Uh, it's probably going to be the heaviest snows are probably going to be 1,500 feet or higher is my best guess ultimately. And then the low runs up right just east of the Hudson River into northern Vermont during the day to mo tomorrow morning uh, and during the day tomorrow and then on up into Canada. And we're left with the chilly air uh, Wednesday. And into uh, that it starts to pull out as we uh, move into Thursday and we start to see a little bit of a warm up. So that's good. And this is what it looks like, by the way, on the surface as we take you uh, to uh, the NAM surface track. And so you can follow what the NAM is showing you with respect to the radar. And you see where the darker blue snows are back in central and western Pennsylvania. Uh, into upstate New York. Again, because of where the upper low track on the, this particular run being a little bit further to the north and west, we're seeing that snow shield being pulled a little bit further to the north and the low uh, tracking just inland of the coast. So you get this arm of very heavy rain that comes up <clears throat> late this afternoon. This is at, uh, eight, at 6 o'clock this evening. You can see the rain at the southern New Jersey, southernmost Pennsylvania, down into the Delmarva Peninsula uh, by... Uh, 8 or 9 o'clock, arriving in New York City and Long Island, and shortly after that across Connecticut, uh, where the heaviest rain will be on the east side of the track of the low. And here we are by 5 a.m., the low center over New York City. The rain is done, and we're left with uh, chilly conditions behind it with leftover clouds, maybe some breaks of sun and a gusty wind for Tuesday into Wednesday. Uh, then the high, next high comes in and moves out. Another front approaches on Thursday, and for the most part, uh, this front looks pretty weak. Looks like it kind of falls apart. Uh, so maybe this will be it. So I'll leave it. We'll probably just throw in the chance that there could be a shower uh, or two on Thursday or maybe even an isolated thunderstorm when the front goes by. And then dry weather follows for Friday. Uh, and uh, setting up for the weekend looks like some kind of warm front uh, with a, another big low. Uh, headed for uh, North Dakota, for, uh, for South Dakota, with maybe another round of snow for North Dakota. And that'll be something interesting to see. It seemed to be the uh, the bullseye zone uh, this particular month of April. So there you have it in terms of what's going on with regards to uh, our weather here uh, for, uh, for the rest of today uh, into tomorrow and for the next five to seven days. The Joe and Joe Weather Show is back tonight at 730 Eastern Time. So we will see you then. Have a, uh, a great day.